Hello everyone, baseball season is finally here. I'm Big Italy 42 here with Spencer Limbach, and we are here with the FanDuel Punch Out. We're talking some FanDuel action today on opening day, and people get excited about Christmas and their birthdays and stupid things like that. I get excited about opening day. This is this is my best day of the year. Trumps all the others. I feel like you're on the same page there. Yeah, definitely. I'm always excited when any sport whether it's NFL, NBA, MLB starts. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, the beginning of a long season for MLB, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get things going. So without further ado, go ahead and kick things off here. And we're going to start at starting pitcher, as you would expect. And we don't need to tell you Clayton Kershaw, top option on the day. If you can make him fit, he's $11,700. Obviously the most expensive guy. And it's not the Padres lineup we saw last year. But it's still the Padres, and it's still Clayton Kershaw against anyone. So if you can fit him in, play him. You agree? Yeah, I'm going to have plenty of Kershaw tonight, um, blending him in. I won't be all in on Kershaw just because there's so many great options tonight. All the aces are on the bump. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be looking at some other guys too, but definitely having some my fair share of Kershaw. Absolutely. Um, if it's not Kershaw for me, I do like Corey Kluber. A great deal there. He's $10,400. Obviously, we know what he did last year. Hell of a season. He seems to be uh, on the upswing, if nothing else. I mean, getting better as he's going on. And I'm a big fan of Corey Kluber in this matchup here in Houston. Yeah, Kluber is my number two guy when considering price over there on FanDuel. So I'm in agreement there. Um, another guy, Max Scherzer versus the Mets. Uh, really like him if you want to pivot off Kershaw, too. I, I think he could be in the same range as Kershaw. Obviously, not with the same strikeout upside but I'm, i mean he's just as legit in my opinion especially in that matchup against the mets yeah i mean great matchup there i mean the only thing that i think really separates the two for me is just the ground ball right that's scherzer's only real weakness struggles keeping yeah. the ball on the ground at times but like you said still elite upside there so i wouldn't be mad at you if you went that route and he's uh one of the bigger favorites on the board as well so mm -hmm. um if you got to go cheap at pitcher and this is obviously would just be like a tournament Henderson Alvarez will be my guy against Atlanta. Is there anybody you're looking at that's cheap that you would be willing to play? Obviously not a cash game because you're going to go with a stud in the cash game. But who else would you like? Yeah, I like the Alvarez call. Um, but on top of that, I think I might, for virtually the same price, I'm looking at Clay Buckholz. I know he really struggled last year, um, which was kind of uncharacteristic for him. But he's got a matchup at Philadelphia. I mean, they have an okay lineup. Not the greatest. I mean, it, it's probably the bottom 10 in the league as of right now. And he's looked really sharp in the spring. So I don't mind throwing him out there in a few tournaments and kind of stacking around him. Yeah. I mean, an aging lineup there in Philadelphia. So some talent, but uh, some some has-been talent as well. So yeah. definitely, uh, definitely in play there as well. All right, let's go on to catcher. I'm just going to highlight some guys that really like the prices. Um, Carlos Ruiz at $2,500. Uh, I know he's going against your guy Buckholes there, but really, really cheap for a guy that you know you you assume he's probably been batting maybe around sixth in the lineup. We've seen him second before last year and sometimes before, but really, really cheap if you need some some salary relief to get a guy like Kershaw into your lineup. Yeah, he's twenty twenty five hundred. So um, yeah, he's really the only legitimate option I see out of that group. Um, otherwise, a little bit pricier, but still pretty cheap. I'm looking at Mike Zanino um, versus uh, Weaver out there playing at home. Um, he's 2,800. I really don't mind him. I think we'll kind of see that as a theme. I really like Seattle Bats tonight. Um, otherwise, the guy I'm finding myself with the most exposure to is Brian McCann. Um, he's a little bit pricier, but playing at home uh, against Hutchinson, who has pretty bad splits against left-handed bats, and as we know, uh, Yankee Stadium, very friendly to left-handed hitters um, in terms of the power department with that short porch out there. So I'm looking towards McCann for some home run upside tonight. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And, uh, you know, Hutchinson, good strikeout guy, but a guy that's kind of struggled to string together good innings, tends to have one mm -hmm. of those blow-up innings. So I like that call as well, especially in that, that small ballpark like you mentioned. So elsewhere, uh, Brewers are in a good spot, as we know, against Kyle Kendrick, worst pitcher on the board, not particularly close. Pretty sad state of affairs that he's your opening day starter. But uh, yeah, it's... We'll, we'll just go ahead and tell you that Milwaukee bats are in play. Luke Roy, mm -hmm. one of those here at catcher at 3,800. So, All right, elsewhere, yeah. move on to first base. 
My favorite number 79, and I'm sure everyone else's favorite number 79, Jose Abreu, one of my favorite hitters most days. Jordano Ventura, he's, uh, he's, he's got a nice, nice repertoire of pitches there, but he struggles sometimes with walks, gives up too many base runners, and Jose Abreu absolutely dominated in the spring, had a hell of a year last year, and he's going to be the one bat I'm paying up for in most spots. Really, I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not going to talk you off of it at all. Um, some people might be scared away from uh, Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City saying there's not a great park factor in there, but as we know with Jose Abreu, I mean, park factors really don't pertain to him and uh, Giancarlo Stanton. So, yeah, good call there. And uh, Ventura is one of those guys with high velocity but not great control. So, I mean, if he gets a hold of one, yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to be paid some dividends there in that spot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, I'm not sure it would be a cash game play, especially because you're going to want to pay up a pitcher, but right. elite tournament play. We obviously know yeah. double dong upside there with him. So, elsewhere at first base, you've got uh, Freddie Freeman's nice and cheap at $3,800. Um, more of a tournament play also there. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do like him as well. Um, obviously, you're going to notice a, a theme here. Lots of guys that play for tournaments, but lots of guys with home run upside. And that's that's what you want to get in your, your tournament lineups. You don't want the guys who are going to slap signals and score runs. You want the guys that could pay off their salary with one swing of the bat. So I'm a big yeah, fan. Especially, well. Yeah, especially at first base there. I mean, it's one of those positions where you're not just looking for a filler to scrape out two points. You really need that power. Um, another guy who fits into that profile Brandon Belt at Arizona, nice hitter's ballpark. Uh, Colin Mentor, he was pretty good to end the season last year. Um, still, in general, has some susceptibilities to left-handed bats, so I like Brandon Belt at 3.5K. Um, looking down a little further, the guy I'm landing on the most, I mean, we talked about targeting against Kendrick of the Rockies. I really like Adam Lynn's price tag on FanDuel, 2.8K. I think that's a great price point. Um, the Brewers are in a great situation. He's going to be batting behind Braun and Gomez and Lucroy. Um, just a fantastic spot for him, and I'm going to have plenty of exposure. Yeah, I completely agree. If you're not paying up for one of the big bats at, for, at first base, it almost has to be Lynn at 2,800. Batting fifth, I saw already, so you got to love that. All right, next up, second base here. We've got the overall top price option, Robinson Cano. I know you're a big fan of the Seattle bats today. I am as well. We know how they are against right-handed pitching at home. So Robinson Cano, for me, the top option if you're going to pay up. Yeah, I, I'll definitely agree there. Um, I'm definitely blending in some Seattle stacks today. And, um, I mean, we should have mentioned Logan Morrison also at first base. He's another cheap option with home run upside um, from Seattle. But on top of Cano, digging down a little deeper, I like D. Gordon. Um, always a guy who could steal two bases, get two hits. I mean, he's got upside that way. Um, and that's kind of what you're looking for at second base because there isn't really power there. Um, so you got to kind of scrape your points together the way you can get them. Um, and D. Gordon's one of those guys. Uh, Chase Utley, another guy with home run upside. Um, I, I said I liked Buckholtz, but, I mean, he's not invincible by any means. So Chase Utley's a guy you could plug in there and kind of hope for the best, and I think that's a very calculated risk. Um, looking down against Scooter Jeanette, he, he's not hitting high in the order. I think he's seventh. Yeah. Six, six or seventh. Seventh. That's kind of frustrating. But uh, at the same time, still a good situation. Cheap price point, 3.K against the you know, subpar pitcher. So I like him kind of as a filler there in second base. Yeah, and you're going to want to get yourself some Brewers exposure because if any of these guys do go off, they're going to be the most popular play of the day. So yeah. don't get yourself behind everyone quickly by just fading the Brewers. That's not going to be right. not going to be a winning strategy today. All right, moving on to the hot corner there at third base. Um, you've got Josh Donaldson had himself a monster spring, but he's in a tough matchup against Masahiro Tanaka, who still battling that partially torn UCL, so maybe not exactly himself. But my top target here, as he always is against right-handed pitchers, especially at home, Kyle Seeger, 3,700 against Jared Weaver, who we saw him really struggle at the end of the last season and not the pitcher that he once was. So I'm a huge fan of Seeger tonight. Yeah, and Seeger had some great splits at home last year, too. Um, if if you're paying up, he's he's the guy I'm really looking at probably the most. Um, I'm in agreement there. Otherwise, spinning down a little bit, uh, Chase Headley at 3K. Um, I kind of like that. We are we already t- talked about um, left-handers against Hutchinson in Yankee Stadium. 
which is a decent spot. Um, so I don't mind Headley. Um, another guy looking at 2.9K, Brett Lowry. He's had a great spring. Um, he has a pretty decent matchup against Gallardo. Um, I actually like the Oakland Bats tonight. I think that's a pretty sneaky stack if you're looking that way. Um, and Brett Lowry is definitely a guy who fits in that category. Yeah, yeah, I can see that as well. And I, you're noticing kind of a trend here. There's some, some really underpriced guys here that uh, are in pretty good spots. So you could fill out a pretty solid lineup still with a Clayton Kershaw or yep. a Max Scherzer here all day long. So I, I definitely like that as well. Um, shortstop up next and going to be some guys here who there's been a lot of talk about. Ian Desmond is one of them against Bartolo Colon. He's a guy with some power, struggled this spring. Um, so not exactly a, uh, not exactly on a tear, but obviously spring training depends on how highly you weight that. I mean, obviously you like that he's, he, you like the guys that are hitting well, but he wasn't. But then again, Bartolo Colon at his age, not a lot of velocity going on, not a guy that keeps the ball on the ground well. So a lot of these Washington bats in a good spot. I just don't know that I'm willing to pay 4.1K for Ian Desmond at shortstop tonight. Exactly. That's that's the thing. I know on a couple different sites he's a little bit cheaper, and that's really where I'm targeting and getting my exposure at. I mean, if I'm paying up that much, I might as well go with Tulo yeah. um, in a nice hitting environment. And uh, Kyle Loesch isn't that great of a pitcher anyway. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I agree there. And uh, Tulowitzki, I mean, we know what he does against lefties and at home and – Still some good numbers, of course, away from home, but yeah. a significant drop-off, as you would expect. But, I mean, mm -hmm. like you said, I mean, a $300 difference, I don't really see the need not to just go ahead and pay up to Tulowitzki there. So, right. elsewhere at, sh at shortstop, I should say, um, not a ton of guys that I'm in love with, really. Um, you've got guys like Xander Bogarts, but he's in a tough matchup. He had a couple... Um, he, had, he had a... Weak season last year. He's a guy who hasn't really paid off what we expected, so he's a guy with some high hopes again this season. Is he a guy you're looking at at all today? Not really. I mean, I really didn't have him on the list. Um, I can see the rationale against the lefty, but, I mean, that is a tough matchup, and, you know, he's kind of one of those guys. He, he could be a filler, but personally, I might dig down a little deeper. Um, we said Brad Miller, another Seattle bat. He's really cheap. Uh, could get you, you know, scrape together a few points. Otherwise, Jose Ramirez of Cleveland um, against a lefty. I kind of like that. Um, and there's one more guy, Freddie Galvis, uh, potentially. He's got a little bit of home run upside, which I don't mind at the shortstop position for 2.5K. Um, I realized that I mentioned Buckholz as a pitcher, and now I'm mentioning like three guys targeting against him, but. Um, that kind of speaks to his, uh, you know, volatility and how he should be a tournament only option. But uh, yeah, Freddie Galvis, I really don't mind him as a punt play. Yeah, and like you mentioned with Jose Igle or uh, Jose Ramirez, I'm looking at him right yeah. now. He was a darling last year, nice and cheap there for a while. Had second base, shortstop eligibility, a lot of places, and uh, he was an easy plug and play last year in a bunch in a mm -hmm. lot of spots. So definitely a guy I'll be looking at as well. So moving on here to the outfield. Obviously, a lot of top options, as there always are in the outfields. I'm a big fan of Giancarlo Stanton in this matchup against Julio Tehran. If you're a BVP guy, you probably don't. I'm not. And he has a ton of power, as we know, especially at home. Tehran struggles to keep the ball on the ground. That's his one big weakness, gives up too many fly balls. So if I'm paying up for one guy in the outfield, it's going to be Stanton today. Yeah, um, I really like Stanton, too. Um, obviously, I think everyone likes Stanton every day. Yeah. Um, regardless of the matchup, Not really. Not a bold prediction. It, yeah, um, but at the same time, if I'm paying up, I'm probably going to go a little bit cheaper. I'm going to go with Carlos Gomez, sticking with that Brewers theme. Um, I really like him and Ryan Braun today. Um, in my system, they actually project. It goes uh, Gomez, Stanton, uh, and then Braun in my projections. So, um, yeah, I mean, I really like them. Between Gomez and Braun, I would rather go with Gomez um, for virtually the same price just because you get that power and stolen base upside. But, I mean, I really wouldn't mind either. Yeah, and, I mean, Braun's in there at 4.1K, so he's nice and cheap as well. And yep. uh, we saw, I don't remember if it was opening day last year, but one of the first games of the season, he hit three homers. I think yeah. in the first week. So not no, saying that's went, gonna happen he today. Went crazy to open the season. Oh yeah. So if you had him that day last year, you paid off, and I was one sitting there with everyone but Ryan Braun, just watching, watching your teams just go go downhill quickly. So 
Um, another guy cheap right there who's been getting talked about quite a bit, should be a popular play today, Bryce Harper. Love him yeah. or hate him. He's, he's got a ton of power, and he's been playing well and uh, finished the season strong last year. So also at 4.1K, I think he's got a ton of upside. Yeah, I, I like him there too. Um, he's a little bit cheaper on other sites. I noticed he has some relative value on DraftKings. Um, I know this is a FanDuel podcast, but a little nugget right there that I'm targeting probably more on DraftKings. But, yeah, I like him. He profiles really well in this matchup against uh, Cologne. All right. Uh, if you got to go cheap here in the outfield – Say you're trying to fit in your Clayton Kershaw. Who's your top option? We'll say sub $3,500. Um, looking at it, I really like – here we go with more Brewers. Uh, Chris <laughs> Davis sitting at 2.8K. Um, I really like that. I like the power potential there. Um, otherwise, some other guys in that range. Alejandro De Aza, he's uh, likely hitting second for um, Baltimore. And not a great matchup against Archer on the road, but Deaza, he's a good, he's a guy who has some pretty decent splits against righties. Um, left-handed bat sitting at the top of, uh, or sitting in this two-hole of a pretty solid lineup. I don't mind that at 2.9K. Um, otherwise, Ben Revere against Buckholtz. Potentially, he's not a guy who's going to give you home run upside, but he's uh, definitely a candidate for multiple hits. Um, Adam Eaton against Ventura. Um, we kind of talked about Ventura with some control problems, and Eaton's a very good contact hitter um, sitting on top of that White Sox lineup. So those are the guys I'm really kind of actively targeting. Um, one more, actually, now that I see him on the screen, um, Angel Pagan. Uh, I like him against Call Mentor. Um, he should be – I don't know if he's going to be batting leadoff tonight. We probably don't have that lineup. I haven't but, seen um, that. Yeah, either way. I mean, I, I think he's in a good spot. Cheap price point, 2.9K. Yeah, completely agree. So there's your breakdown for FanDuel. Thank you for hanging out with us here. We're going to have these podcasts daily. We will see you guys again on the FanDuel Punch-Out again tomorrow.